Hello, children. Today I want to tell you a story. It happened long ago and far away. And children, this story is true. Actually, I could tell you two stories. And both of them would be true. I could tell you a story of pirates. Now, as we all know, pirates love their hats and they love their swords. But you know the thing about pirates is they're very selfish men. They always live for themselves. They live for what they can take for others, for what they can hold in their hand. I think I don't want to tell you a story about pirates. I think today I will tell you a different tale. A story about men who did not live for themselves, but lived for others. Now, these men did not dress like you and I dress. These men looked very different. My friend is going to help me. These men would have carried shields and swords, and they were fierce warriors, and they were so very, very strong. Yeah. And they were wonderful wrestlers. They would march into the arena and fight. They were the bravest of the brave. One more shot of those muscles there. Yeah, use your imagination, children. Now, these guys were strong, but not just strong in body. That part, the strong in heart, you'll learn more about. So, children, clap for my friend as he goes away. And now, I thank you very much. I am going to tell you their story. They lived during Roman times. And like I said, they were wrestlers. And when they weren't fighting wars, well, let me show you what they were up to. They would march into this arena, and an arena was like a giant football stadium. And they would march into this place, and crowds would gather to hear them. The arena looked something like this rows and rows of seats and they all made a giant circle and the men would wrestle in the center and as you can see the crowds are big they fill the stadium and children I don't really have enough time here to draw all of these people but you get the idea lots and lots and lots of people everywhere you looked there were people and everyone was cheering. And then the horn would sound to announce to everyone that things were about to begin. <laughs> and then the emperor, who was like the king, would enter. And everyone got very quiet. Now, the men who were fighting were fighting for a crown, something like this that they would win. This one is made of gold. They were not fighting for one made of gold. They were fighting for one truly made of leaves. And even then, they didn't keep it. They laid it at the foot of the emperor. And as they entered, they even sang a very special song. Again, these men were the 40 best in all the empire. And they would sing, 40 wrestlers are we, wrestling to win for you, O emperor, a victor's crown. Now, they always won. Nobody could defeat them. No one could defeat them on the field as they wrestled. And no one could defeat them in battle. It happened that there was a war. Rome had a lot of wars. And as they were going out to battle, it was a very cold place. The snow had fallen and it was really, really cold. And the emperor decided that he was worried about something. You see, he'd heard there might be people called Christians ooh, in his army. And he didn't trust him. He didn't like them. There was a reason that the emperor did not trust Christians. You see, people who loved Jesus loved him most. The emperor... He wanted to be loved most, so you can see the problem. So the edict, the law went out to the generals, and they were tasked with something very simple. All they had to do was line up all the men and say one thing to them. Ask them a simple question. 
Do you love Jesus? Simple question. And then, of course, there was not good things that would follow that. So the general lined up all of his men. He had no reason to believe he had anyone like that in his army. I mean, he'd heard things about Christians. Surely he didn't have any of those people. And the 40 wrestlers were in that number. They lined up. They had their swords. They were ready for battle. But God had a different fight planned for them that day. So the general said, do you love Jesus? And 40 men stepped forward. 40 young men, 40 young men with no fear in their eyes, 40 men that knew what they were doing when they stepped forward. They knew that it would cost them their lives, but they loved Jesus so much, it was okay. Well, the general got very upset, and he said, get back in line, what are you doing? These men had fought beside him. They had fought back to back with him. They had saved his life. He was very upset. He's like, oh, okay, we're going to try this again. And so again, he asked the question. And again, 40 very brave young men, 40 heroes all stepped forward. Well, now the general didn't know what to do. Because you see, he really did care about these men. And he said, all right, I'm going to give you an out. Here's what we're going to do. Near here, there is a frozen lake. Now, remember, children, I said there was snow on the ground. So it's very, very cold here. And the general said, all right, we're going to go to this place where the lake is frozen. And this is what we're going to do. I am going to send you out on this very, very cold, cold lake. And I'll be waiting here. And I'm going to be standing by a nice big fire. And if you want to change your mind, you can come to the fire and we'll never speak of this again. Now the general, he wanted to make sure that they could see the fire. So he made the biggest possible fire he could make. And the flames were leaping up and you can imagine how terribly cold it was. He sent those men out onto that frozen lake. They didn't have their warm clothes. In fact, they didn't have any clothes at all. They were cold, cold. And out they marched, and you heard them singing. In fact, they kept singing. Why would they sing? They had joy. Even in the worst of places, they had hope. And they now sang the song they'd always sang before, but they changed the words a little bit. They sang, 40 wrestlers are we, wrestling to win from you, O Jesus, a victor's crown. Notice the change? They're not fighting for the emperor. They're fighting for their one true king. History tells us that all night long, the general stood here by the fire. He had on nice warm clothes. He had on a big cape. He was comfortable. He had on his helmet. Everything for him was absolutely nice. But for the men, it was not nice at all. He had on warm boots. And he waited there by that fire, warming his hands. And he kept listening all night long to that song. And in the early hours of the morning, one man, half frozen, so, so cold, drug himself toward the shore. And out on the lake, you heard the saddest song. 39 wrestlers are we, wrestling to win for you, Jesus, a victor's crown. Their friend gave up, and it broke their hearts that he quit, that he didn't have enough courage to stand, that he couldn't stay with them. But something wonderful happened. History can't tell us what happens in a man's heart, but surely God spoke to this man, this general, because all of a sudden, as that man crawled to the shore, the general threw off his helmet, he threw off his warm cloak and his warm clothes, he threw aside his sword, and he went riding out onto the lake. And then you heard the most wonderful song, 40 Wrestlers Are We. Wrestling to win for you, O King.
a victor's crown for you, O oh Jesus, a victor's crown. See, he is their king. He is the one they serve. Wow, what a story. Now, if this were make-believe or the movies, this is where the hero flies in and maybe Superman, maybe someone else, but they all get rescued. Well, it isn't quite like that. You see, children, those men had the courage to live for Jesus, but they also had the courage to die for him. But this is not a sad story because you see, because they loved him and because they were faithful and because they followed him to the end, children, he took care of them. He makes you and I a promise that he will prepare for us a beautiful place in heaven for us to live with him. And someday, children, you can meet these 40 wrestlers. Now, maybe you're wondering, well, how could I ever meet these guys? How could I go to heaven? How could I live today without fear? How could I have hope when things are really, really bad? I have the answer, children. You see, God loved you and I so much that he did something amazing. He looked at us and he could tell that we had hearts that needed mending and we can't mend our hearts. You see, we say bad things, we do bad things, it's the way we're born and we can't fix what's wrong with us. But here's the good news, children. Jesus came to earth. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And because he did all of those things, he took our punishment on the cross. That means if you and I ask God to forgive us and Jesus to rescue us, then we can know Jesus as our king. That means that God will become our father. And children, God is a good father who gives hope and love and peace, who takes away our fear, who gives us the courage to do the things we think we can't do. And more than that, children, God is the one who will change us from the inside out so that our hearts are mended, so that we are not who we were. Children, I love this story. Now, maybe you remember at the very beginning, I talked about men who lived for themselves, pirates, selfish men. And then I told you a story of 40 men who lived not for themselves, but for someone else. In truth, they lived for Jesus, children. And that's what you and I need to do. You see, the pirates would have thought things like this were true treasure. This is what they would have wanted. But children, things you hold in your hand are never treasure. The things that are true treasure are not these things. True treasure is Jesus, children. Trust in Jesus and hold on to him. Thank you, children.